Oh yeah, I'm gonna slide one of these into a DM. So let me take a picture of this right now. Yeah, let me pull back that hood. Ah, send. Oh cock, it went to my Instagram stories. By the way, this video is about the Sony A7C. The embargo time, I read it wrong. I thought it was PM instead of AM. So that is why I'm a bit late. But as they say, better late than never. So here's the video, play. Just when you thought there aren't enough full frame mirrorless cameras, boom, there's one more. It's the Sony A7C. So you've got A7III, you've got the A7S3, A7R4, and then now the A7C, just to confuse things more. That's probably what the C stands for, confusing, but no, it probably stands for cheap because this is entry level mirrorless full frame. The A7C is fitted with a brand new compact shutter to make it fit into that A6600 style body. But what else is inside and what the bloody hell is going on with my ear? But before we get to that bit and before I lose my voice, this little message from the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Audible, the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. Okay, let's go. It comes in two very distinct flavours. You've got this silver one, the silver top, aka the Tony Northrop edition. I've, I guess they've gone for the retro kind of look. Personally, I'd go for the black version, but there you go, at least you've got two options. And the grip here is very reminiscent of the old NEXs, so it's kind of retro in some ways. I mean, the body is shaped a bit like the E6600, the kind of slab-sided, almost rangefinder-esque type body, mainly because the viewfinder's on the side here. It's not a rangefinder, but I do like the viewfinder that's on the edge here. It doesn't cover up your whole face, the camera. But it's perhaps not the EVF that is gonna be of interest. It's the flipping LCD screen. Just when you thought you couldn't get enough vlogging cameras, we've got another one. There we are. And here we have got their fancy digital Sony mic. Can't remember the name, it's, uh, we'll put it up on the screen. Along with the vlogging grip. Can't remember the name, we'll put it on the screen. They put, they put all this stuff on the left side of the camera. So instead of the SD card being under the flap for the battery, like A6600, they put the card flap here. I guess that's a good thing, so you don't have to open the battery flap all the time. Use a Z battery, by the way. You can plug in a 3.5 millimeter mic jack and still flip your screen, but if you use the USB-C or use the headphone socket, then you can't flip the screen properly because it uses the bottom socket under the flappy bit. But otherwise, the body is magnesium alloy. It's a monocoque um, construction, which makes it lighter and smaller. Of course, it's the smallest and lightest full frame camera from Sony. Comes in a little over 500 grams. So naturally, I've taken the kit lens, put it aside very carefully and put this big wang on. 12 to 24 F4. Yes. I mean, you're probably thinking, how did they manage to put a full frame sensor in such a tiny body like the A6600s? It is a little bit thicker. You can see the thickness there because they've colored the top of that silver and you can see the black bit there where it kind of juts out a bit. You've got the A7S III, which has got the tilty flippy screen, which is quite big news because it was like the first Sony mirrorless camera to do it, to flip that way. This is the second, but that does cost quite a bit more. This comes in about 2G, but actually it's very similar price to the A7 III. So essentially what you're getting is the A7 III in a different package. 24 megapixel sensor, just like A7 III. 10 FPS, but the A7 III doesn't do this, the digital mic. You can use this with the digital sound. Do I sound digital? No, because sound is analog, but it records it digital and then converts it to analog. I'm hoping with the new processor that the rolling shutter will be better, a bit like the A7S III. Not banking on it, not. Side by side with the A7 III, rolling shutter is pretty much identical, which is not necessarily a bad thing. The A7 III wasn't exactly the worst offender when it came to rolling shutter in the Sony lineup. This 5-axis stabilization inside of the A7C is a more compact mechanism because it's a more compact body, but in use, in function, it's pretty similar to the A7 III. With the 12-24, it still seems a bit shaky when walking and filming. 
The kit lens, not much better for talking, walking, vlogging shots, but at 28 millimeters, you're not really gonna be using it for vlogging anyway, but for handheld shots, you can get some really nice stable stuff. Yeah, if you like the asymmetry and thought, hmm, I like that, but I don't like the body, then you're in luck because this is very similar to that. But this has got Bion's X processor, which is nice. Can't tell you what it does. Processes stuff faster. There you go, told you. Now, when it comes to just switching the camera on and taking the first shot, the A7C is quicker than the A7 III. It almost takes two shots in the time that A7 III manages to pull off its first shot. But yes, you're probably wondering, but have they added the new menu system? No, they haven't. You have to buy the A7S III for that. It's not touchscreen as well for the menu system. So, um, tough titties, basically. But you know, the old menu, it's not bad. Some people actually like it. Not totally the same menu, they've added a blue peaking to the menu. Yeah. Now they put a big red button on top of it, so it must be made for video recording, but yeah, video is still the same as a 7 It's still 4K, up to 30p, no 60p, no, no. You, go, you get full HD 120, but who cares about that? Yeah. So it's still the 4K, 100 Mbps, just like the a7 III. Same 14 stops dynamic range, same 6K oversampled 4K 100 Mbps footage, but still, it's not exactly the same. There's a slight difference in the way it renders the colors. Apparently the same color science as the a7R IV. Skin colors are looking pretty good, but I think the a7 III skin colors are pretty decent too. Oh, never mind. This is not made for the geeks, the video geeks. That's the a7S III's job, isn't it? Okay, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking the price isn't too different to the A7 III. The specs aren't too different to the A7 III. So why would you get the A7C? Well, there are some differences. Apart from the ones that I mentioned, the AF is now sensitive down to minus four EV versus minus three EV of the A7 III. And now you can change the AF speed to level seven. Oh, and vertical data position recording for your Instagram stories videos. Just be careful what you put in your stories. But hold on with the conclusion music, it doesn't end there. The A7C is the better camera for video, despite having exactly the same specs for video. It has the flippy screen, but in overheating tests, it lasted a lot longer than the A7III. In 24 degrees C heat, worked out in Fahrenheit, it just kept going on and on. Also because it doesn't have any time limit on its recordings. Unlike the A7III, which cuts out after 30 minutes. But even after a 7 was done a little over an hour, the A7C just kept going and going. After two hours, still kept going. And then almost three hours, I just gave up because I was bored. <sighs> I can't get to overheat. I was almost prepared to help it along a bit. Anyway, play the conclusion music. Whereas the A7S III is probably still making a lot of splashes, the A7C is a more subtle announcement to the world. These are the Karens that attract more buyers because of the more accessible price. As an entry level into full frame, for Sony, this is appropriate to current demands, the continuing trend for video. It might not have the latest video features from Sony, but has the right body for video. Real-time AFI tracking animal, whatever they call it from the current lineup, not the A7 III, that doesn't have it. No record limit and prolonged hot temp performance. For someone who wants an entry level into full frame and wants good stills capabilities and video mode, whether it be for vlogging or not, this is a solid, reliable choice. Okay, now it's time to talk about the sponsor of this video, Audible. I always listen to audiobooks when I go to bed. That's why I have my AirPods by my bedside so I can send myself to sleep with the nice, soothing sounds of a nice audiobook. And what exactly am I listening to right now? Well, I'm listening to this. Aha, it's Alan Partridge knowing me, knowing you. I like Alan Partridge too. Alan Partridge has just been one of my favorite comedy characters since. Knowing me, knowing you, Alan Partridge. Aha! Which is why downloading this audiobook is a must have for me. Every month, aha! Every month, members will get one credit to pick any title, plus two Audible originals from monthly selection, and access to daily news, as well as guided meditation programs. Mmm. Mm, yes, with Audible you always enjoy easy audiobook exchanges and your own audiobook library you keep forever, even if you cancel. 
It's just a great way to keep my mind entertained when I've got plenty of time at home these days. So go to www.audible.com slash KaiW or text KaiW to 500 500 and you can start listening with a 30 day free trial and you get one audiobook free and you can download all of the audiobook originals now, not just two per month for free. Or you can even check out their stories.audible.com where you can stream hundreds of titles for free without signing up. So there you go. Try it out. What's the worst that can happen? Aha! See you later. Bye bye. Subscribe.